It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Matte. For its annual Person of the Year, Time Magazine has named what it calls the silence breakers, the many women who have come forward with stories of sexual misconduct and crimes by male abusers. One of the latest institutions to be rocked by this Me Too moment is the NPR radio station WNYC. On Saturday, the journalist Suki Kim wrote a story in New York Magazine outing John Hockenberry, the longtime former host of the WNYC show, The Takeaway. Kim reveals that Hockenberry sent her inappropriate messages, and her own experience led her on a reporting mission that uncovered the stories of several of Hockenberry's female colleagues. They reported unwanted forced kissing, hotel room invites, inappropriate messages, and bullying behavior. Kim also noted that three women of color co-hosts all left the show during Hockenberry's tenure, and two of them went on record with stories of hostile behavior. Well, on Monday, Suki Kim appeared on The Takeaway and called out the show and WNYC. Um, I just don't understand how you could have not seen if you've been here for a decade, where almost everyone I talked to were aware of an abuse happening around Hockenberry on either level, and also considering three co-hosts, women of color, had all left after filing complaints, mm -hmm. which essentially shut down the younger women. They couldn't complain because, you know, really powerful women complained and they were let go, really, by the management who did not protect any of those women. What about the fact that three women were let go back to back after filing complaints, which almost everybody knew? And also the fact the show is about diversity, which is led by a white man, really, John Hockenberry, where all the women of color were somehow they had to leave the show. And it's still uh, you're a white man hosting the show yeah. and you didn't get fired. Well, like those. I mean, you didn't you didn't have to leave the show Suki. for a decade. That's Suki Kim appearing on The Takeaway. John Hockenberry left the show earlier this year after his contract was not renewed. And just today, WNYC announced the suspensions of two more longtime hosts, Leonard Lopate and Jonathan Schwartz, over allegations of inappropriate conduct. Well, earlier I spoke to Suki Kim about all this. She is an investigative journalist, novelist, author of the bestseller, Without You, There Is No Us undercover among the sons of North America's elite. And her latest piece for New York Magazine is public radio icon John Hockenberry accused of harassing female colleagues. And I began by asking Suki Kim to tell her own story with John Hockenberry. I um, was on a, I was a guest in December 2014 and about a year later he began emailing me requesting meetings uh, for brainstorming. And he just kept sending me those emails. I met with him. There wasn't really um, anything. It just he wouldn't explain what brainstorming for. So then um, his emails quickly turned quite inappropriate, and he just kept sending those, uh, you know, sexually suggestive emails to me uh, for another uh, over a year, really, and um, until finally. I just brought those emails to the management at Takeaway WNYC. And when did you bring these emails to them? What, when was this? It was earlier this year in February. The reason I did that was because um, I, you know, was at the same time just getting asked to comment on my topic, which is North Korea, by the producers of his show separately. And I couldn't go on the show because if the host is sending me these really inappropriate emails, how can I go? on those shows to talk about my work. And so it was really disrupting my work, which is what sexual harassment really is. I couldn't do my job, basically. And then, of course, I began to then wonder, like, what is going on in that office? Because I have been on uh, different shows at WNYC and his show several times. And it's all a lot of young women, you know, under 40. And um, having seen so many women, young women there, Working daily with him, I did question and I began the investigation to see what had gone on there. It's been a decade long show. And of course, through my investigation, it became pretty apparent that a, a harassment was happening on all levels. Yeah, you uncover a lot. Uh, people speak of being invited to hotel rooms, a lot of sexually suggestive comments, um, quips about people's weight. 
uh, forced kissing. Can you summarize for us briefly what stood out to you in what you found from the women you spoke to? The abuse is actually on two levels. So if you uh, talk to younger women who have were both uh, generally sort of low-level, mid-level producers or freelancers or interns, uh, they were getting suggestive, sexually suggestive comments, lots of late night G-chats, and he also, there's like a, you know, forceful kissing. Um, so, but then like older women, and there are not that many powerful women, he's kind of, it's a one-man show, there's really nobody else powerful on that show, but there once upon a time there was. Takeaway was founded in 2008. Uh, on a funding, actually, for to promote diversity, and that diversity, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of it is about gender and racial diversity, and and so that show hired co-hosts, female, women of color, um, from 2008 to 2012, three different women of color co-hosts. Uh, had come on and each one complained uh, again at the management about Huckleberry and each one then their contracts were not renewed or you know they were basically they had to leave the show so that level what they went through and I, I did talk to those women and they you know he was sort of yelling at them in public and impossible for them to do their work and just sort of on-air bullying happened a lot, which even I think the listeners started noticing. But each one, woman was let go until 2012. Huckleberry was alone, hosting a show on diversity uh, by himself. Right, and that was such a striking moment in that clip we played before when you appeared on The Takeaway this week and you called out uh, The Takeaway for being a show, claiming to be a show by diversity that has driven out its three female of color co-hosts. And on top of having a white longtime co-host in, in John Hockenberry, you also noted, as we heard, that his replacement, Todd Zwillick, is also a white man. And also, I mean, Todd Zwillick has been a, a fill-in host for a decade. So he'd been around and, you know, he wasn't, he lost it. You know, the other women didn't last. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's pretty apparent why he was able to stay and he also then became a replacement host. So when I talk about harassment, it's actually on, you know, basically harassment is at a job place is basically someone bothering you so you can't work, right? But when that person is your superior, it could either happen sexually or it happens professionally. So there also there's a racial component clearly so it's actually a work environment where women just were not allowed to work let me put you the response today from laura walker the ceo of wmyc she spoke on the record today for the first time about this on her own on her own radio station speaking to wmyc's brian lair this is what she said in the case of temporary co-host for aishadea she says she spoke to you after Hockenberry said she shouldn't want to stay as a diversity hire, quote unquote, and told her to go lose weight. If you confirmed he said those things, why wasn't that a firing offense and what action was taken? Again, I can't comment on what action was taken, but it was taken seriously and we did take some action. Look, every day for the last um, several weeks, um, I have asked myself whether we took enough action and whether we should uh, really look at our protocols. I apologize to Farai, to Kristen, to the women who came forward. I have a huge amount of admiration and respect for these women for coming forward at this time. And I apologize that our, our protocols were not there and our policies were not there. So that's Laura Walker, the CEO of WMIC. Suki Kim, your thoughts on what she says here? Completely dishonest. She said um, she has nothing but respect. Well, if she respected them so much, why did she either, uh, you know, not renew their contract or not, you know, let them go and let them be abused? Some of these women made complaints repeatedly to the management, which was not at all listened to. The management did not protect any women. They only protected Huckleberry. So for her to turn around now saying that she has respect for these women, I mean, clearly not. 
So I think the lying of the management is just continuing. Hmm. Do you have any hope that things are going to change both at WNYC and in the broader media culture that's been exposed so starkly in just the past few months? I don't know. I mean, this is a very uh, strange time, but, you know, at least we can talk about these things. And there are some accountability we're seeing, but how much is it still enabled? Is it just for this moment only? Are people, human beings, just so horrible? So they'll only try to fix something once they are in fearful, fearful of getting caught. I mean, that's sort of what's happening with WNYC. It's a public radio. It's about trust of people. And yet, it's only when New York Magazine runs an article, suddenly they're frantically trying to fix something that's been going on for a decade, where women are constantly being sacrificed, being derailed, being pushed out of their jobs, being violated sexually. We'll leave it there. Suki Kim, investigative journalist, novelist, author of the bestseller, Without You, There Is No Us, undercover among the sons of North Korea's elite. Her latest piece for New York Magazine is called Public Radio Icon John Hockenberry Accused of Harassing Female Colleagues. And that's the piece that has set off this Me Too moment at WNYC, leading to all this accountability that we're seeing now. So, Suki, we commend you for your reporting, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News. Mm -hmm.